Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode. This is Danny Day Fiance, season seven, episode three. What am I worth to you? Okay, so we're gonna get right into it. First couple, we got Robert and Annie, okay? Um, <laughs> this was a mess. The scene opens up, we got, um, oh, Annie and uh, Robert done did some things, okay? Uh, Annie tells us that um, after Bryson went to sleep, you know, they went into the living room and they did what they had to do, okay? So that she is happy this morning, her and Robert are cool, okay? She, um, R Bryson goes to school, okay, so they have the whole day together, right? And so Annie's like, you know what? You know what? Um, I need some clothes. I need some clothes, you know, like, you know, my clothes I had in the DR, you know, I gave them to my sister because I'm such a good person, you know. And like, you know, he's like, yeah, that's why I love you because you're all about your family. She was like, yeah, no, I'm a good person, okay. So like, I need some new clothes, okay. So he's like, you want some new clothes? And she's like, yeah, stupid, okay. And he's like, okay, so we're going to go shopping for you some clothes today, okay. So they go to the store, okay. What type of store is it? She about to find out, okay. We already know it's a thrift store, okay? So they go in there and she's looking around and uh, he like, you like, do you like anything? You like this? And she was like, no, I don't see nothing I like. Um, it's, uh, it's disgusting in here. Like, I don't know. I just don't see nothing I like, you know? I, mm, I don't know, okay? He's like, you know, he picks up like a red dress. He's like, girl, you know, this would, be, this would look nice on you. And she's like, no, this is for little girls, okay? I don't, I'm and not a little girl, I'm a woman, okay? And this is not, you know, I don't like this. And <laughs> so she keeps saying all of these clothes are disgusting, okay? And um, one of the people that works at the, at the store, they're like, hey, y'all need some help? And she was like, um... No, like, I can't find nothing in here. And she's like, you know, you can just, like, keep shopping around and whatnot. And it's fine. She's like, we, we, uh, we, we buy clothes from different places. You know what I'm saying? So we got a good selection up in here. And she was like, what, you buy clothes? What do you mean? And she's like, yeah, we, you know, we buy clothes. And she's like, these clothes are used? And she's like, yeah, they're gently worn slash used. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, oh, my gosh, I don't I, this is not what I expected, okay? He bring me to store, and these clothes probably were worn by dead people, like, they were like, you know, <laughs> she was like, <laughs> she was disgusted, okay? She was like, I don't, I've never worn clothes like this in a DR, like, I wear, I want something like Versace, like Gucci, you know, something like that. And he bring me here with, so, with clothes that are used, you know? And so the... <laughs> The store clerk is there the whole time they talking. I was like, I don't know why she didn't leave. But she just like posted up on, you know, on the clothes rack. She was like, uh-huh. Oh, you wasn't expecting this to be used clothes? Oh, what you had to say, Robert? I was like, girl, if you don't get out of the conversation, okay. But she was still right there the whole time. And Robert is like, what you mean? These are these are nice clothes. You say you wanted to come to the clothes store. And she was like, no, not like this. Like, I want like real clothes. You bring me here. It's, it's disrespectful, okay. And he's like, you're inconsiderate. And so they get to arguing or whatever. And the store clerk is still right there posted up like, yeah, girl, that was so inconsiderate of him. Mm -hmm. I was like, girl, if you don't go find some other customers to wait on, okay. So uh, she is disgusted. She is mad, okay. So the next scene we got, I think it's later that night, they go to dinner, okay. She is still like, I can't believe you brought me over there to whatever use clothes. Like, it was just disrespectful, okay. And he was like, you know you are inconsiderate and you cry and you're a crybaby okay and so um they get to the place it's like a seafood place okay and she's looking at the menu and she's like you know what like um can we have food like like you know seafood and fish and stuff like that for the menu for the wedding and he's like um no like everybody gonna be eating off of my dime uh it's gonna we gonna do like a um you know uh, I, forgot, I forgot what he said, but he's, he's he was basically like, it's going to be some cheap food, girl. I, I might serve some people some Lunchables. I'm not sure, but uh, it's definitely not going to be no seafood, okay? And so she was like, oh, my God, like, first of all, I want to have, like, a, a beach wedding, okay? And he was like, so what beach you want to you wanna, uh, do? You know, you want to, um, I can, like, do you in front of, like, I can, we can do, like, a pool wedding, you know, find somebody's pool to do. It's just like, no, I want to do Miami Beach. 
And he's like, girl, you think I made out of Miami Beach money? And she was like, uh, that's what you told me to get me here. So like, <laughs> so basically it seems that Robert has promised her all of these things and he is not holding up to his end of the bargain. And I'm like, Robert, if you told her all of these things that you were going to get her the, the latest iPhone, that she, she was going to be draped in Gucci and all of these things, um, and if she asked for it, can you be mad at her? Okay, this is what you promised her. And she was saying that to us. She was like, he promised me these things. He's a liar. Like, I'm starting to think he's a liar. He promised me all these things or whatever. And he was like, uh, she was like, I want you to uh, apologize for bringing me to the used clothes store, okay? <laughs> he was like i apologize for you know i apologize for you being so like a crybaby and inconsiderate and stuff and so they going back and forth okay the waiter's like i'm sorry to interrupt y'all argument but uh, y'all want some y'all want some of this food okay and so he brings the food and robert is eating the food and she like i just i can't you know i can't i can't do it no more like i'm not even hungry you know and he's like so why are you not eating she's like i'm just disgusted like I don't even want to eat like I want to go home you know and she you know he is like okay we can go home like whatever you're being inconsiderate and you're being out of touch or whatever okay and so they box it up and <laughs> they box it up and they drive home they're on the drive home they're still arguing okay she's like I don't even want to like I want to sleep far away from you okay and he's like well um are you gonna go like to the living room or whatever? And she's like, no, you go to the living room. I'm not going to the living room, okay? And so they go back and forth. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, she's basically still saying the same thing. He promised all these things to her and he is not delivering. And I'm like, well, Robert, I ain't got nothing. I mean, Annie, Annie is asking for everything. She's like, girl, I uh, in the DR, like I was poor, but I still was draped in Gucci and Chanel and all the Versace. I was like, okay, girl, um, all right. <laughs> so, so Robert promised her that she was gonna have that same lifestyle and better here, and he ain't got no money, so so he can't so he can't do all of that. So he's like, when they get home, he's like, um, I got a surprise for you, and she's like, okay, what? And so the lingerie we saw him buying a couple episodes ago, he gives to her. And she's like, oh my gosh, thank you for the lingerie. It's so sweet. I'm about to go put it on, okay? Okay, and so she puts it on and whatnot. And they do what it's doing, whatever. Okay, they still got a lot of issues and problems to work on because uh, Annie wants to be draped in Gucci and, and, you know, Chanel and Red Bottoms and, you know. So, Robert, uh, you're going to have to take out some loans or something, write some... <laughs> You got to do something, boo. Okay, because Annie is expecting it, okay? So, next we got a new person, okay? A new couple. Mike and uh, Natalie, okay? So, Mike is 34. He's from Sequim, Washington, okay? He said he is 6 foot 4. He is a mountain man, okay? he We see him riding a four-wheeler, you know, in the clip. And he says he lives on 26, 27 acres of a tree farm, Okay? It's been in his family for a while. He then wound up buying the, the tree farm from his family and basically put him in some debt, okay? So, um, he is in, he says he has a lot of credit cards out and he's in some credit card debt and some all kinds of debt, okay? His uncle lives on the farm with him in like a barn and the uncle helps him like keep, you know, keep up with the farm and whatnot, okay? And he says that he has been married before, okay? We see a picture of them together and he says that she had left him for a woman okay so sorry to that man okay so after that happened he said it took a toll on him he gained a lot of weight and then he wound up losing it and so now he's ready to mingle okay he was ready to mingle right after that okay and so he says he met the girl that he's you know with natalie because he had a friend who had found love in the ukraine and um they had a baby and they made mike the the godfather and the baby uh the baby's godmother was was from the ukraine and she was a single woman and so basically his friend and you know the wife set them two up together and so that's how they met okay so they started texting each other and he uh went to the ukraine to see her um and so <laughs> We see Natalie, okay, and we see Natalie, you know, she's like, I love you, this is my heart, 
uh, you are in my heart and I love you. Okay, I said this is about to be. Uh, <laughs> This is about to be like, what's the name from the Ukraine we saw from 90 Day Fiance sending out these uh, generic love messages to everybody? Okay, I hope not. Because it seemed like it seemed like a very generic love message. Okay, insert name, you know, text that, text, send all, send the same video to like everybody on this website type of thing. Okay, so I was like, I don't know about all of that. Okay, but um, he says that whenever he went to fly over there to the Ukraine, after two weeks, he proposed to her. And so now he's back in Washington and the, he filed the, the K-1 visa. And so they're waiting on it to get approved. OK, um, he FaceTimes her. We see him sitting on sitting by the stump of a tree. He FaceTimes her. They start chatting or whatever. And then she brings up the idea of them having kids. OK, and Mike starts to get nervous. He was like, <clears throat> oh, see, um. That can wait, you know, just let's wait on the kids for right now, okay? And he was like, I shouldn't be having kids right now because I got all this debt. And uh, I haven't told her about my credit card debt and all this type of debt or whatever. I said, okay, wow. So, um, <laughs> she probably think you got all types of money and stuff too and you in debt. But anyways, okay. So, um, next scene we got, we see Mike trying to spruce up the farm to get ready for, for Natalie to come, okay? Um, it is the day that she is that she has her interview for the for the visa. So him and the uncle are trying to like get things together at the farm. They have some dye, some blue dye they putting in this pond to make it look from, to make it go from green to blue. I said, okay, girl. Um, so he calls Natalie, he FaceTimes Natalie to see how the interview went, the visa interview, and she was like, I have bad news. And he was like, girl, lay it on me, girl, because he says they already bought the the um the plane ticket for her to come because they had just anticipated her being approved you know easily you know in one shot and she was like no um they told me i have to wait six months to come back in six months you know to get it to know i guess something happened he was like girl do you have anything from your past like that might be like hindering the the you know you getting this visa and she was like oh not that i could think of not that I could think of. I was like, girl, you sure? Think a little harder. Okay, what's happening? Okay. And so um, she says everything, you know, uh, should be fine after that. But she doesn't, you know, she said she told everybody, you know, in her family, bye. Because she was anticipating on getting this visa and deucing, okay. But she was like, nah, I got to wait six months. So she was like, can you come up here and visit me? And, you know, take care of me, please. Please. Okay. He's like, girl, I, um... I ain't got no money right now, pretty much. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of money for me to get down there. And I said, girl, um, it, it definitely is. And she's like, but please, please come. He's like, girl, say no more. I'll be there soon, okay? He's like, this is going to be a, a, a debt in my debt. Um, but, you know, when she calls, I got to come. I said, okay. That was Mike and Natalie, okay? So then we get to Marcel and Anna, okay? So <laughs> y'all remember last episode we had Marcel and Anna uh, going to dinner with um, her mama and one of her sons, uh, I think it was Gianni. And basically that, they found out that Marcel's family does not know anything about them kids. And if they do find out, they're probably gonna like excommunicate him, you know, or whatever. So they, uh, we got Marcel and Anna going to the park, you know, to try to like talk through, you know, this type of method right here. The, you know, why you don't want your family to know about my kids? You know, they're going to talk about it. So she was like, you know, um, you, are you happy with how things went last night? And he was like, no. And she was like, well, why is that? Because you cry. I said, girl, this is ridiculous, okay? So she, he was like, you crying? And um, he was like, uh, she was like, uh, are you going to go, like, what if your family finds out about my kids? Like, are you going to leave? Like, he was like, I don't know. <laughs> I said, Marcel, <laughs> Marcel don't know anything, okay? He's like, I don't know. Um, and she's like, so when are you, are you ever going to tell them about my kids? And he was like, well, maybe about 10 years. Okay, and then he tells us, like, no, probably not 10 years. Like, probably when they did. Okay, when they're on their deathbed, you know, they'll forgive me of my sins. 
But I'm planning on keeping this a secret forever, okay? And so she's like, well, um, this is not okay. And he's like, you know, I know. <laughs> I said, he's like, um, is this a problem? And she's like, yes, it's the problem. Like, why you keep my kids a secret? He's like, well, deal with it, okay? <laughs> so, so the next scene, um, they're back at the house. And, you know, her and the boys and Marcel, they go all outside to talk, okay? And she puts it all up Marcel because, you know, Johnny starts the conversation. Johnny's like, so when are we going to Turkey? And I was like, Johnny, you know you're not going to Turkey, okay? So Marcel was like, uh, in about like three years, okay? And Johnny was like, uh, and no, Anna was like, stop lying, okay? Tell them boys the truth. And he was like, well, I have a problem. And then the oldest Joy was like, what's your problem? Okay, what, what is the problem? And he was like, well, it's my family. And he's like, what about your family, okay? And he was like, well, my family, you know, they wouldn't like, you know, if, uh, they wouldn't like y'all pretty much okay and yeah <laughs> so so you know Anna explains how like they would not talk to him anymore or they 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 don't want he wants to keep them a secret basically and um Gianni asked like if they would expel him if they find out about them about the kids and he was like yep yeah, pretty much okay and so the poor, uh, the poor little, the, the youngest boy was like, so that means you don't really care about us and you only care about our mama? And I was like, oh, <laughs> so sad. <laughs> it was so sad, okay? And he was like, no, I care about y'all. But, oh, uh, y'all can really be a secret for right now, though, okay? I said, wow, wow, okay? So, who do I blame? I blame Anna and Marcel. Anna was wrong for that, like, Joy, Joy, the oldest boy, was like, I mean, that's his problem. Like, that's not our problem. Like, you knew that before you came here to be with us and, like, start a family with us that you would be excommunicated if, you know, because she had kids. So Joy's like, that's not our problem. And I was like, it's not. It is your mom's problem because your mom allowed all of this to happen. And she, she moved this man over here to be with y'all and didn't ask him the important questions about y'all. Okay? It is just ridiculous, Anna. So... Girl, he says, uh, he also says that he came over here and he agreed to all this to make Anna happy because he don't like America. He does, you know, America, like that part where they live at is just rows of corn, okay? He like, this is not cute. Let's, you know, he wanted to go live in Turkey because Turkey is beautiful, whatever. And um, he was like, that is a sacrifice I made, but eventually I want you know, I want to move back to Turkey because I can't live like this. You know, walk with all these rows of corn, okay? I said Marcel. So, um, so Anna says if, you know, she's, she doesn't want to pick between Marcel and her kids because she says if she does pick, it's going to be her kids. And I'm like, girl, I, I don't, I don't know that for sure, okay? I don't know that for sure. So that is all with Marcel and Anna. Then we get to, uh, Michael and Juliana. Uh, Michael, he's back in the United States. Um, he says, you know, the last time we saw them, they were in, uh, he was in Brazil. And basically, they went to the embassy to try to get this girl her, her visa. And the people at the visa was like, girl, have you worked in prostitution or whatever? You know, we're trying to just ask the hard-hitting questions, okay? And they, they got offended. So he went to go talk to his lawyer about it, like, can they ask these questions? And the lawyer was like, they sure can. That is up to their discretion, okay? He's like, she's like, it's it's pretty reasonable, okay? And so um, he says he's been, like, worried about it. And then he said he got a message from Juliana. And Juliana's like, I got approved for the visa. I got the visa. I'm headed over there, okay? So the next uh, the next we see of him, he gets, he gets a Hummer. He rents a Hummer limo to pick this girl up from the airport. He's spending all this money, okay? She arrives, you know, they're all happy, they're kissing each other. I said, girl, let's let's move on. She loves the limo. She starts FaceTiming. She's like, girl, I'm I'm about he picks me up from a limo, y'all. Ooh. I was like, okay, girl. So um he pulls out the champagne. The champagne is the same age as Juliana. He's like, it's it's nineteen ninety six, the same year you were born. I was like, Do you think that's cute, Michael? You think that's cute? Anyway, so she's loving, you know, New York. She's, she's seeing the Empire State Building and whatever. She says she's so happy. She was poor all her life. And, you know, now she gets to explore the world and see everything, okay? 
So the next scene, they make it to Connecticut. Um, she is excited for all like the American holidays, for Halloween and all that. And uh, she asks if the kids are going to like her. And uh, Michael's like, um, well, yeah, I mean, they're really good kids. Um, so yeah, they should like you. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll say yes to that question, okay? And she's like, she believes him, but she don't think that she trusts him around. You know, that she, that he's going to trust her around the kids like that. So, um, she meets the kids. The kids are really nice to her. They have fixed her like a dirt pie, a dirt cake with some like worms and stuff like that. And they also made breakfast. Well, the little boy didn't make breakfast. Uh, the little girl made breakfast. And I was like, that is so cute. They, they were really nice to her and like loving and like all this stuff. And, you know, she felt loved or whatever. And, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, Michael says that, you know, his two worlds are coming together now. And everybody's happy for right now, okay? But wait until they meet their mama. I don't know if it's all gonna, if it's gonna be rainbows and sunshines then. But we're gonna see, okay? So that was it for them. Then we get to Emily and Sasha, okay? Emily's water them broke through the night. Uh, she ready to have his baby, okay? So Sasha is at the hospital. He is translating everything for her because the nurses don't speak English like that. So he has to be there so that, you know, they can, like, translate. They were like, we need to, is she ready to, you know, get the medicine her uh, for to stop the pain? And uh, he was like, he had to translate that for her. And um, he says that he was not at the hospital for his other kids, okay? So he was like, this is unusual for a man to be at the hospital in Russia and, in in, you know, in the in the... Uh, in the room with with his wife but he's like I'm here only because she needs me to translate otherwise I would be at the house okay I said alright Sasha so um uh she's in the late she's in labor she's been in labor for like seven hours at uh, at one point and the doctor's like look we need to you need to start pushing okay so she tries to push and um basically the doctor says that his head isn't like in the birth canal enough so they gonna have to have a c-section so she is like, you know, she's in labor, so she's in hurt, she's hurting, she's in pain. Um, they rush her into the operating room and they do a C-section on her. And at first, uh, they pull the baby out and Sasha's like, he's not crying, like what's going on, okay? And eventually he starts crying, it's a beautiful baby. Uh, his name is David. Sasha starts crying and, you know, they're happy. It's a beautiful baby, thank goodness it was a safe delivery uh sasha was i mean uh, not sasha emily was safe the baby was safe so that's all good okay the baby's name is david nice okay so that was it for them then we get to tania and sinjin i think that's the last couple y'all tania uh sinjin <laughs> they wake up at the hotel um thankfully the friends are in the hotel room with them when they wake up sinjin's like oh lord i'm so glad to have a little alone time with you girl and Tania, and uh, her name is not Tania, it is Tanya. I've been pronouncing this girl's name wrong, okay? Her name is Tanya. Um, Tanya's like, you know what? My friends are definitely going to be be with us today, okay? They're leaving tonight, but it's going to be another full day of friends. And Sinjin is like, great. Great, I'm so tired of your friends, but great. Okay, let's go. So, um... So they go to they go to the they go to Beyond Sushi, y'all. I've been mean I've been wanting to go to Beyond Sushi when I go to New York. Okay, so I already know the food's gonna be good or whatever. So I was looking at their food. I was trying to like keep track of what's going on in the scene, but I was like, oh, that look good. I'm gonna order that. I'm gonna order that. Okay, I'm gonna get that. Okay, but uh, they they're at the restaurant and the friends are there in tow, of course. And so the friends are asking questions. They're like, oh, are you are you tired of seeing us, Sinjin? And Sinjin is like, no, no, I'm not tired of seeing y'all. Okay. I said, just, you know, just, just keep, keep the peace, Sinjin, okay? And so they ask him, like, what he's going to do for work or whatever. He's like, you know, well, I can, like, pick up bartending, you know, or, you know, what else I want to do? I want to do, like, all these other things. I don't want to go to Hollywood. And, you know, I, I might as well just be an actor, too, okay? And they're like, that's a lot of things, okay? And I was like, well, that's none of y'all business, first of all. Y'all shouldn't even be here, the friends. You know, it's, that's really none of y'all business. Y'all shouldn't be here. But okay, girl. So uh, Tanya is nervous, too. She's like, well, why don't you just pick a lane and to stick to it, okay? So um, they ask him They ask him about, like, uh, like, the kid situation, like when he wants to have kids. And he's like, in about seven to ten years. And Tanya's like, uh, 
no, like in three years, okay? And then he tells us he don't know if he's even ready to have kids right now. He did, He's never really thought of having kids. He don't really want to have kids like that, basically, okay? So the next scene, uh, the friends are gone, thankfully, by friends, okay? So they go to dinner, and um, it's, this, it's a nice place. They're all dressed up. And so the kid situation comes back up again. She's like, um... You know, earlier today, you were my friends were talking to you, and you were acting like you didn't you didn't want to have kids. I want to have kids, so like, what is the what is the deal? So they go back they they go back and forth, and he says he would not be pressured into having kids. Okay, and she's like, well, I wanted to have kids, like, so you I'm I'm with you now, so like you need to get, you need to get with the picture, okay? And I was like, well, I mean, y'all should have thought about this before getting together. Okay, it makes no sense. Okay, y'all, this kid situation didn't come up once. In the time of y'all dating, but y'all haven't even dated long enough to have this conversation, okay? So, um, yeah, he's not budging, and she's like, look, my original plan was to just get a sperm donor and do it by myself, but now I'm with you, so you're going to have to get with a picture, okay? And so, he's like, he's like, he's like uh, I want to go and traveling and stuff like that, and we don't have no money um, for all of this. And I was like, I, I mean, she is living in a shack right now. Like, from what she said, she's living in the shack behind her mama's house. So, they, like, y'all gonna have to get that situation together and get on the same page before y'all think of having kids. You know? So, that's on them for that. Okay? So, yeah. I don't know what's gonna happen with them, but uh, he says that the universe will decide for them. Okay? So, basically, he's saying, look, if we get pregnant, we get pregnant. But, look, girl, I'm not trying to get pregnant right now. Okay? And she's like, look, I am trying to get pregnant. So, you know they're going to get pregnant, basically. Because he's like, girl, the universe will decide. So, let the universe decide. Okay? So, uh, that's it for this episode, you guys. Let me know what y'all thought of it in the comments below. Like, who stood out to y'all this episode? They didn't give us too much this episode. Um, but, yeah. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Hit that bell so you can notify when I post these videos. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye.